So I mentioned the last time we talked that what are we going to do about this? And so I decided to look up a couple of books and uh, had a cup of coffee. And lucky enough, uh, huh, may not have it. Oh, here. It is. My notes. And I'd like to uh, kind of share it with you. All right. Notes come out of uh, Iamblichus, Proclus, a couple of books on mythology. And I just thought popular knowledge, something that we can all look at. And um, see, the order is curious. Why wasn't it heaven and earth? Huh? Hmm. And we mentioned that last trip. Well, um, and also, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aeneid, nine. Nine is the perfect number in this game. Number of completion, well, nine of them. Well, here's my hypothesis, very simple. Whatever they represent, represent, taking them as metaphors, see, whatever they represent, is it possible to locate in the text the things they represent and keep in the background, we could call those gods. Ah, another one. Okay, look here. What's the real issue we're dealing with? Level one, agree. Intelligence. Being. Vitality. Often, this realm is just called, for short, being. And if you want to say, if you take these together as a totality, that's a oneness. Or a totality, right? And therefore, these are also called um, peanuts, or onenesses. That's the Greek for oneness, peanut. And then there's soul. And soul and body, nature, and the structure. Now here's the problem. It's a magnificent problem. Mm. And I don't think any other religion or spiritual system really deals with it. And that is if there is this, then there should be this. Goodness. If there is goodness, is there a way of seeing if that goodness, now each one of these levels is imitating the former. in some very important way. Now, here, you and me, people, here we are. And in this rather curious world of ours, there's just 
plenty of suffering, pain, confusion. And if that wasn't worse, there are also Republicans. <laughs> right, Julie? Well, that's half the picture. And, and cowardly Democrats. In any case, right? Look at He is going to say that there is a way of understanding the structure so that you can see this goodness through a system of necessary categories proceeding all the way down so that when it is received on this level, <clears throat> each receives a benefit unique to themselves, unique to each, totally appropriate to each, So therefore, we can say it is the recipient of that goodness. But this right, if we use the metaphor of an ocean, right, then it has to proceed. This goodness, like an ocean, right, or source, must feed all of these rivers and all of these streams. I must proceed all the way down, and you should be able to see how it does that. And if you do, then you're seeing the nature of providence in the time is. And I'm going to point out at this point that I think there's a way of looking at these mythological categories as being uniquely appropriate for this task. Now, if it is, then as we proceed further in the time is, two things should follow. We should be able to see from what we've already done certain parallels already. And we should also be able to see it further in the rest of the book or the rest of the dialogue. <clears throat> now, uh, these are my notes and anybody can copy them. They're, they're on parchment, paper. Uh, well, maybe not parchment. I have, a question. I have a question. You want to copy my parchment? No, I have a question. It comes from Pete's Coffee Shop. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> usually, I don't think of the ocean as the source of water yeah, through I, the tributaries. But I rather, do. Yeah. It's well, the end. That's easy. Call it the Great Lakes. Oh. Okay. Done. See how easy that was? <laughs> Did you see it? That was pretty the good. The lakes fill the ocean? The rivers. Mm. Did that surprise you? The rivers fill the ocean. Well, yeah. Good, good, good. I always like to surprise you. But I would still... Uh, Object to the use of the word ocean in that example. Well... Since normally you do not envision yeah. the ocean being the source of streams, it usually goes the right. other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I chose so, to try okay. to make that analogy going this way. 
you're okay. quite right. We could also turn it around and say we should be able to see it going up. Yeah. Okay, next, okay? okay. Whatever are the, as it were, minimal conditions for these should also play a role in the selection of gods that he has, given a couple of uh, points. Now, um, the most interesting thing I, I found is that these nine gods are called the leaders of Essence or Usir. Now that's interesting because we use that term a lot. That's saying there's something in the nature of reality right, that has the capacity for turning upon itself and that the very highest vision of the nature of reality which is that oneness, has that property, and so the others do equally to lesser degrees in different ways, but the same principle runs through them all. Therefore, these gods are called the leaders of essence. And I like that, right? Um, now, okay, these are also called sublunary gods. Them, all those gods that function for generation of things in our our world. All of this has to do with one theme: the way generation proceeds through this hierarchy. See, this is a hierarchy, isn't it? So, like, uh, this state, right, pure intelligence, also uh, what we call the most brilliant light of being as an experience, soul, both general as well as individual. Now, the problem he's going to have is to try to find a way of describing how this is connected to this. In other words, there should be a linkage between all of these. So he's going to try to explain how, given the nature of the good, how it is possible then to talk about this, 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 as, as it were, descending goodness all the way down. Yet, when it hits to us, it's, even though it's descending to us particularly, it doesn't lack the goodness that it has from the highest level. So that's his, that's his problem. Now, um, I drew a picture of what I think might be interesting. Um, it's very difficult to draw, so if you need an art instructions, I talk to Brad, and he's willing to do it for a modest fee. Heaven can be represented as a straight line, from the highest to the lowest. That's heaven. And uh, 
there's something interesting about it. It also has a kind of uh, motion, right? Usia, Usia-like. Heaven has that turnabout upon itself. And uh, Earth, or day, Earth, is in the middle. It's in the middle of heaven. And the force of all of these revolutions turning about brings Earth into the center. And what does it do? Uh, See, that's interesting. Should I write that down? Sure. Um, so it too revolves and turns, and therefore Earth has a kinship with day and night. Now there's several words that are going to go through this measure. Motion, difference, whole, part. Well, it's going to be, we're going to use these terms quite a bit. Um, so, earth in the middle receives the power of heaven. Right? It's situated because it turns and as heaven re revolves itself and turns upon itself, earth then being in the center receives the power of all of that turning about, and therefore it is paternal, and it is, of course, maternal. Masculine, feminine. <clears throat> now, uh, this is what I think is interesting, you see, that, that um, the demiurgos to this point is creating the demiurgos in our text. Or Zeus. Right? He's brought into existence only holes, total holes. And, um, and nothing that has been generated in our everyday physical world yet. That's all, just holes. And the model he uses, of course, is the paradigm. And that is the source of all of the great ideas that he uses in order to express the intelligibility of the universe within the work that he's producing, which of course is uh, the cosmos. Um, so that um, Earth and Heaven Earth is, see, Earth is in heaven. Earth is in heaven. By the way, I wondered whether any of you remembered uh, the image of Zeus, or the Demiurgos. Would you not agree in him is the uh, paradigm? Yeah. The idea in the mind of God that's used in creation? And on the basis of that, he reflects. And on that, he creates the universe, which is a copy, right? Which is a copy of that idea in the mind of God. Find anything similar in this? Mm -hmm. That in the middle of heaven, there's the earth. And you know what the earth is going to do? It's going to finish the process of creation into physical things. It's going to complete, not whole, but how it becomes into parts. And therefore, it's a mirror image, as Zeus is to the Demiurgos, so, so heaven contains within itself 
or either way, you can see which one fits for you, and you can see you can do it yourself. Um, Earth is now compressed. It contains all of the power that was in heaven through all of this momentum. And therefore, it is now fit to generate. So what we're doing is looking at the generation proceeding through this hierarchy into our physical universe. And as Zeus used the paradigm to create all the things that are eternal that he did, so he needs something else analogous to him who's going to do the same thing for physical things. That's what this myth is. The whole thing, that's the myth. The family of gods are capable then of explaining that process. So therefore, earth is within heaven and it comprehends and contained by them. And therefore, uh, in conjunction with them, it fabricates, so you know, it has to fabricate as it proceeds down holes. Parts. That's what we're going to say. And I left the coffee shop and they started playing uh, a certain kind of music, which I wasn't really into. Um, yeah, I think I'm... Um, I wanted to get a good quote. Um, Imitation, yeah, we got the, you know, uh, So just to make sure, uh, this system, which we call sublunary gods, they are parallel to the higher set of gods called celestial gods. So as one function, so does the sublunary gods, sublunary gods. And, uh, okay, that's pretty, pretty good. And I also use this little one. <clears throat> Let's see what I can do now, okay? Let's go through a little bit more detail. The goal of this is to preserve the generative and perfective energy so that it can proceed down in measured way from the summit all the way to the last of things. So, um, I, uh, so let me make a statement about Earth for a moment. Right? I pulled this together a couple of things so that you may question the rhetoric. Earth is the receiving bosom of the generative heaven. It possesses the prolific power of heaven. 
and it pertains to the realms of generation, unfolding into light the paternal, the definitive, the, uh, what we would call the measuring. See, through all of this, the idea of measure <coughs> is going to be equally important and motion. So therefore, those elements are key to Earth <coughs> that pertain to the realms of generation unfolding into light, the paternal, the definitive, measuring, and containing, one word which we find quite interesting, containing providence. Therefore, if all of the powers of Earth then proceed all the way down, we can say, well, through it, it ends up with providence being distributed to all things. Um, I found it um, Earth is our nurse and extends through the universe, becoming the guardian and the demiurgos of day and night. Uh, she's the first of the gods and she's generated coincidentally with heaven. Therefore, they are a duad that are generated simultaneously. She's full of generative power. And since she absorbs the power and the energy of heaven, she contains within herself the demiurgic perfection. They call Earth, therefore, a god. <clears throat> First, of the sublunary gods. As a whole, it's an animal. It's immaterial. It's separate, has an intellect, divine. It uh, dances around the intellect, as he calls it. It generates and nourishes all things. And here's the analogy. Just as <clears throat> the Demiurgos is the source of all intelligent living creatures, so she is the source of all living creatures, not intelligible living creatures, but the, all of the range of animals lie potentially within the goddess Earth. Therefore, as the intelligible living creature comprehends in itself all divine animals, so to Earth does to terrestrial animals and also fills our souls with illuminative uh, uh, experiences of herself. Um, so she gets the power, right? She draws the power and then disperses it. Now, They produce Oceanus and Tets. So let me just, um, I did a few checking on that back and forth. Um, and um,
Oceanus, in principle, okay, in principle, the particular distinguishing quality of Oceanus that um, she subsists according to the whole, right? She's a whole. Um, you see, what do you do? How did how did we see that the the um, idea in the mind of God can become the source of creation? Well, that idea in the mind of God. Remember, even eternity itself. You have to be able to make distinctions in this. And it's only when you make distinctions in that and then employ it in some way as a model do you then have all of the parts that were later called forms. So in the same way, if Earth contains all, potentially all living creatures, then it too must contain blah, 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 as a whole. Therefore, you're going to have to have something that then can take the parts, the same thing with the intelligible, break them into parts and distribute them. Hold to parts. Hold to, hold to parts. It's going to go on through the whole thing. All right. Therefore, Arshanas then becomes, real to become it is, the source of I think he even calls it several times the cause of motion. Right. Most important, I would let me change it in terms of order. Progression. Motion. Right. Uh, power. And it then is able, now, see, if there are forms here in the, in, in the paradigm, we should be able to put them hierarchically, shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing here, you do here. What does it? Here it is, Oceanus does that. It then can take that god, which is the source of all terrestrial animals, and arrange them in a progression, put them into motion, give them some kind of power to continue doing what they need to do in order to be generative and live and survive. That's all under the heading of Oceanus as a principle. And therefore, it all therefore reaches down to the level of the intellect, level of the soul, level of vegetative, etc. Now, once, therefore, this is broken, see, this is broken like this, into holes. Like, would you not agree there are holes mankind? There's a hole, isn't it? We talk about man. Oh, fine. It's a hole. Mm -hmm. Then there must be something that allows hole to parts into its multiplicity. Some principle. Same thing doing with the intelligible world. There must be some principle that allows the division and the separation into these ideas, forms, ideas. He's saying the same thing on the, on the terrestrial. This is the terrestrial creation where we were dealing with, not the cre we were dealing with the whole cosmos as creation. So as the cosmos creation is to the terrestrial, so these gods can be ordered to serve that function similarly. So then, tithes. He gives perfection to the parts. He's the source of dividing, see, dividing, separating. Separating. All right, allowing the parts now to exist. And therefore, for each of the things that are separated,
they have a separate and different. Where are my categories? Separate, different, different. Do I have a category? Ah. They have a separate and different kind of motion and, right, for each of the divisions, like they're, believe it or not, is there such a thing as cats? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. He would say, how do you account for the fact that all cats seem to have the same kind of equally mankind? He says, by the way, each of these holes, cat, man, each of them have a certain kind of lifetime. That's a measure. They have a certain measured lifetime. And therefore, that has to be established. What does that? Tick. See, it takes the holes, breaks them up into parts, which generated here, now becomes parts, and now you need a process of distribution and differentiation. Right? And... Uh, it proceeds all the way from intellect to souls to nature. So you can say soul is in it, soul as a whole. Oh, then each particular soul. What does that? What breaks that? Take it as a whole. You talk about these things. Now, he goes here, right? Porky's is very interesting. I had a trouble trying to figure out the reference to Porky's, but it turns out to be pretty simple. Thank goodness. Uh, it produces, it takes this, look here, it takes these separations, it takes these separations, and produces them and is the cause of them entering into physical productive principles. Nature. That's therefore that's the principles of nature. Physical universe. That's physical. That's physics. Higher principles of all physics would fit right in there. The productive principles, how it comes right, all well, yeah, 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 there it is. Saturn or Kronos and Rhea, right? Kronos takes the partial, takes the partial, takes the partial just like Forks does, only it doesn't descend to physical reactive principles, but it introduces The total natures, right, it defines each, it defines each, and this is also from Oceanus, it defines each intellectually. So now you have cats and dogs and man, and now each is defined intellectually and therefore it can be used by a later creator to produce it into particularization. Because you first have the idea of man, the idea of cats, etc. Rea calls forth the divisions from this intellectuals that were just produced by Kronos into all various progressions, right? It fits it into various progressions. all the way to the last forms of life and does so as vivific, right, as a uh, power, 
as a generative power, the Vivek. See, defines everything intellectually, adds to it a Vivek power as it then ranks these things in a hierarchy which then can become a progression. These two, of course, generate these two, not Porky's because it's concerned with physical productive principles, and there'd be no need to use that as a source for Zeus and Hera. So, it's separate for nature. So Zeus, here's a great one. So I'm sure you, you, you can uh, hear the echoes of this. As Zeus adorns sensibles in their totality as totals, picking up the word to write again, picking up as totals, adorns as totals, Imitating in heaven, imitating the processes of heaven, imitating, see, it's in, imitating the very processes that are going on that we discussed in heaven. Now Zeus imitates them. And therefore, uh, I think there's a very strict analogy between as heaven functions, so too does Zeus function. Only the only difference is that. Uh, all of the efforts of Zeus are towards the material universe, which is the time is. That's the time is right there, total, taken as a total. And Hera, then she moves whatever, whatever it is, all things, and fills them with powers and evolves them according to every progression. So she takes the see. There's a kinship. She takes the progressions away and therefore is able then, look, was able to uh, bring about an evolution, evolves with them, and moves whatever, and fills them with powers for, in every progression for their completion. Therefore, these gods fabricate sensibles, some according to one, but others according to the other idea. And uh, I should say something about how Porky's and nature, he doesn't have this, but I'll, I'll do it, okay? And because nature is not a god, you know, that's why he doesn't do it. But, uh, <clears throat> Because I think I found something that fits, and I, I kind of enjoy it. I, I like this quote. This comes out of Proclus, page 970. Souls should survey the fountains and roots of nature in order that they may behold their own dignity and the total series from whence they are suspended. And adhering to this, focusing on this, they should then contemplate the universe. Yes. So soul should see, survey the fountains and roots of nature. in order that they may behold their own dignity, then you're seeing you are the result of nine gods coming together to bring about a sense of uh, adorning and productive nature of the universe in which you are being brought to perfection by these nine gods. That's why in basketball they always use nine players. Same thing with tennis. Right? They always use a team of nine, don't they? Right? And yeah. they always use nine balls simultaneously. Yeah. At once, yes. Forget yeah. that. And they always have love. <laughs> yeah, love, thanks. Love love. Yeah. All right. So within this, then, you see your own dignity. 
and the whole series from whence that dignity is suspended. And adhering to this, they should contemplate the universe. Is that a nice code? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that myself. Got to stick in something you like. So, uh, now, obviously there's much more to this, but uh, as I say, they turned me out of that coffee shop before I... <laughs> but, now wait, here's the moral of the story. A lot of this is scattered, that what I pulled together, that's scattered. And I, I pulled it together under the idea of providence. So this whole thing is to show providence. He, in uh, 25 pages, he mentions the word providence once, mm -hmm. secondarily. Uh, we're turning around and saying, no, 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 this is providence, this is the way providence pursued in our universe, through these Aeneid of nine gods. Uh, on, uh, I would, it's worth going back and looking at it. And I plan to do it, of course, because I kind of enjoy it. Peter, you said through the Aeneid of nine gods. What do you mean, Aeneid? Pardon me? Nine. Aeneid. Nine. Oh, it means nine? That's what the oh. word means. One, two, three, four, six, okay. seven, nine. Okay. Thanks. Good question. I'm a little stuck on, on heaven. Me too. Me too. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, hey, maybe I can help. Go ahead. The, the, the sky, the cosmos? No, 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 no. These are principles of it. This is not heaven. This is not earth. And several places in, the, in these works where they mention these gods, they specifically say, don't confuse it with the terrestrial earth. It's the principles See, whatever exists, there must be a cause of it. The cause must fit together into some structure. The structure may ha or should contain the dynamic forces so, so that you can understand the principles by which whatever does exist came into existence. If you can personify that in a hierarchy and then back up and say certain processes can be named with God's names, because they match the way those things function in my philosophical or metaphysical system, I have those. Now, uh, uh, but uh, let me... Uh, Because I would like to, uh, I think it was on my coffee sheets. I have files where I have uh, napkins and tablecloths. And, um, See, the best I've been able to do about heaven is this model. See, because they're conjoined, it isn't that there's a, a God called heaven or Uranus right, that we can distinguish from gay called earth. They're conjoined. Right, so that a lot of these we can assign particular things to them but here, it's like a process. Heaven extends, the principle of heaven extends to all terrestrial things, from the highest to the lowest. And one great quote, which I didn't give, which is a good one. Uh, that line stands as the axis running through the entire cosmos. And that axis revolves. See? And it moves, it has a motion, has a motion. 
And that's why they get the idea of uh, music of the spheres. See, anything that moves said then to be able to give off a singing, a song, a harmony, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Right? But this axis running through all things revolves around the center because it's an usia. Right? It's an usia. All of these are usia. Heaven is an usia. It turns upon itself. In doing so, the center of it, the center of it, is then the center of heaven and the source of heaven and therefore a lot of things can follow from that. See, it's a product. And that's why I use this model that earth is like as that is to that, see. Earth therefore stands to the great paradigm as Zeus stands to heaven. Right? And as this, and as Emerson creates and holds, so this whole process to take holes all the way, break it down into particularity so that it finally can account for the particular things that are most interesting to us, which is man. Well, it took longer than I thought maybe I Oh, this the guy, look here, see, now look here, see, look at this great quote, see. Uh, this is not just assigning names to ideas, it's also saying that these things exist, see, and have the power to manifest themselves. And to choose. More? That's all. I'll just yes, as they choose. The, 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 yeah, therefore they, they will. They choose and they no. make choices. No. 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 no, no, they choose to become, right? <coughs> sure. So it's Kerry was saying they make distinctions, make choices, but the choice is about becoming, right? Yeah, like, yeah, this whole thing. Manifesting themselves. Manifesting themselves. That's true. Yeah. So it's not like they yeah. choose to go play video games. No. Like, Choose to so therefore, into these nine, you see, are leaders of <coughs> turning about, reflecting upon oneself in the various areas in which they then have their play their part. Right? The leaders of Usia. <coughs> and uh, so, uh, here, what does that mean? I mean, does that mean like what Zeus is what could choose to like appear before us right now? Best. I'll bet you a nickel he has an answer. <laughs> you know. Well, I think... Come on, try it. Well, I like, I like fantasy, so... No, no. I like to think of it that way. But. See, if you, grasp, if you grasp that question, it's likely you have a good answer. These gods manifest themselves as far as they choose. Therefore, it must presuppose both existence and some kind of power of will in order to exhibit whatever qualities these things are in respect to the way they function either individually or collectively together. And he makes that point, by the way, that uh, all of these gods may do other things in other, in other ways, but they come together to do this collectively. They do this all collectively, not separate. It's distinct. Now, uh, let me ask you, did you find this... Uh, Interesting or no? Oh, yeah. You know what you just said is very helpful because you know when I think of the gods, I think God of intricate cooperation, but but war of war where Zeus supplanted Chrono, the, the, the Titanic, mm -hmm. maybe the Hestia version. Mm -hmm. You're talking about more of an Orphic tradition of of the gods, it seems. Yes, and. Uh, and equally well, this is a departure from the Orphic system. So that, that's a big point. Uh, Orphic system, of course, comes from Thanos' <coughs> night, right? Uranus, Kronos, Zeus, 
uh, era, right? So it's, a, it's a different. This is because that doesn't represent the power of providence descending in the terrestrial realm, and that's the skull. At least I'm putting forward that. So, look here. Uh, this is not divine inspiration. This is opening a couple of books over a cup of coffee and doing some work. So, therefore, I want to go back to the text. No, that's a little bit of divine inspiration. No, no, no. That's a, a little bit. All right, coffee, it does bring divine inspiration. <laughs> Um, it is, as I say, impossible, right, to disbelieve the children of God. And they lack probable or necessary demonstration. It's, it's too great a task for us to discover and declare their origin. Concerning the other divinities, right? To, con to discover and declare their origin is too great a task for us. We must trust those who have declared it beforehand. Um, what do you, would you go along with that? Would you not agree what I have here is not something that is, uh, cannot be found by any, any of the classic people? They had, this, they had the text and hundreds and thousands more than, than we have. Right? Some libraries at the time had uh, well over uh, 200,000 copies of Greek literature. You know, we have put all the Greek literature on this table. You can get two people to carry it out. It's all been destroyed. Uh, so this primarily comes out of Iamblichus and uh, Prophilus. All right? Here. Yes. So, so um, <clears throat> the first. The first indication of our physical universe as we know it is for Porky's, isn't it? Yes. So that's the first that's the first that's the first that's, mention that's right. of anything about our physical universe. Yeah, yeah. And these are the physical properties from that then account for the properties it's physics of nature. At its highest right, level. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Now can we go back and say, look here, can we say that given Bang. Providence. Can we say, oh, okay. Now can you line up the gods? So that presupposes blah, 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 all the way up to uh, earth and heaven? <laughs> See, because this is part, not all of providence, but a particular part for a particular person at a particular time under particular circumstances. Therefore, it presupposes a lot of distinctions, doesn't it? Divisions, distinctions. What's doing that? What, see, these people ask not what we do often. You know, our, our concern is what is the cause for things. They're also going for uh, what, what must be the prior condition for things that makes causes possible. Right. I, we, we want to say, what is the cause of fire? Oh, you light it. Ignition. Temperature. Right? Ignition. Let's say, yeah, that's true. By the way, what's the condition that must be necessary before there is, cogni uh, before there is ignition? It must be oxygen, we would say. It has to be a certain temperature of kindling, kindling temperature. Right? It has to be a certain kind of fuel which can absorb certain kinds of elements to, to be ignited. Those are the conditions. Conditions are always prior to a cause. That's this, theoretically. See, what are the conditions that one must assume if this guy gets some benefit? Now, why is that so curious and important? Because, see, we're going to go through all of this. And the vehicle for provenance, we're going to see streams. That's where we're going. See, because he wants to say, see, intellectually, progression or power, or the intellectual, uh, defined intellectually. 
So this is a uh, reflection of the Demiurgos and creating all eternal things up to this passage because at this point he then introduces the junior gods to complete it. But first he talks about this and no one can understand it. And, you know, it's been lost. You just have to believe it by custom. Do you? Yeah, now we can. <laughs> as long as you have it. Yeah. parchment, paper. <laughs> References. One more quick question. On your bottle on the right, the Zeus is not serving as a demiurge. Pardon me? The Zeus serve as the demiurge? Yes. It seems like he comes last rather than first in terms of time. The Zeus is a god. I'm not following your point. Saying that that if Zeus was the demiurge in that model, he should be higher because all the physical has already been created before him. No, because all he does, what does he do? He's taking all of that. He reflects on binding it. He reflects on everything above it. He reflects on everything above it and then and produces, then produces the cosmos. Right. Yeah. yeah. So as a matter of fact, he's using this. Mm -hmm. That's the paradigm he's using. Yeah. 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 But these things in between it allow terrestrial functions to produce the particularities that we all know. Okay, because they are not the things themselves. They are not the things themselves. They are only the the, the form. The, they are only the uh, the nature of what. I'm, I'm I'm not saying. That. I'm saying that there are very strong quotes that support this idea again and again, especially in Proclus. He says, hey, don't be mistaken. We're not talking about heaven or heavens. We're talking about the principle. Okay. Especially with this word, you see, because that yeah, is also terrestrial earth and the principle of earth. So he comes every once in a while and says, now remind, remind, don't, don't fall for that. It's not earth. Okay. So Zeus can still create the physical earth because it hasn't been created yet. But that's what Zeus is doing, isn't it? Right. And right. those conditions necessary for generating it. Right. right. He's bringing uh, order into the physical universe. That's Seems right. Seems like the physical universe already exists. It's a, it's a, it's not at it's not at rest. It's, it's disorder. It's it's, dis yeah. it's it's orderly yeah. disorderly motion. So. So the physical productive principles can produce a, a universe that's in disorder and requires Zeus to correct it? That's what it's saying. No, no, wait a minute. For providence. For, uh, not cosmology. Well, okay. Yeah. Requires providence to correct it. Because if it's true that at 30 he's saying the purpose of what Zeus is doing or the Demiurgus is doing is to show the providence of God. If that's true, then we have to keep that in mind. And you can't talk about the provenance unless there's some disorder to bring about some kind of a change. So, <laughs> one way of stating this, would it be accurate to say that this is the metaphysical order hierarchy that is the precondition for providence to manifest and function right. all the way down to the All the way, that's right. Oh my. Only that. That's right. Just a snapshot it of may the use some, It may use some metaphysical reasoning in general, but it must all be tailored for this one purpose. If you can read it the way we're reading it, which is what I think you said. And doesn't that... At 30. That's either there at section 30 or it's not. Then would this support, if the statement is true, then would this support the claim that the work is really about problems. And the whole work is about prophecy. About prophecy. Divination. Dream. All the ways in which providence can proceed to man. See, he can't hold the position he's holding unless he has this kind of creation. He was going to say providence comes through dreams. 
because you say, wait a minute, that's intellectual. How is it possible that providence, goodness, can proceed intellectually to benefit a particular man? What does it presuppose? What conditions must be in place for that to take place? She's filling it all in. So, the, the function of providence is to bring about goodness into the disorder, right? The way of providence is? The function of providence is to bring, bring about goodness in the disorder? Uh, yes and no. It's to bring about a particular benefit to particular things which then will have a transformative effect on chaos, yes. But not, <clears throat> not in general, only in particular. That's why this is always particular. Why? Because there's no point in having providence unless there's disorder. Providence doesn't do away with disorder. It's a way in which providence can benefit those things that are in a process of, see, motion, cause of motion, power. And now there has to be some intelligibility with all that power and energy moving around. So, so then the, the disorder that's prior to Zeus yes. is, is general, and therefore it doesn't need Providence? Therefore, you need providence. That, let's go back to 30 and C, okay, everybody? Take a look. All right, at 29E, this whole major paragraph, let us now state, right, the word the cause is not there, right? The word the is not there, remember? So the only time he talks about, uh, as, as it were, a cause is in the last sentence. That's why the Thomas Taylor is better translating it. So if someone has the Thomas Taylor, why don't we read it? Let us declare then, on what account the composing artificer constituted generation and the universe. Okay. Yeah, keep going. The artificer indeed was good, but in that which is but in that which is good, envy never subsists about anything which has being. Hence, as he was entirely void of envy, he was willing to produce all things as much as possible similar to himself. If, therefore, anyone receives this most principal cause of generation and the world from wise and prudent men, he will receive him in a manner the most perfect and true. For as the divinity was willing that all things should be good, and that as much as possible nothing should be evil, hence receiving everything visible, and which was not in a state of rest, but moving with confusion and disorder, he reduced it from this wild inordination into order, considering that such a conduct was by far the best. For it never ever, for it neither ever was lawful nor is for the best of causes to produce any other than the most beautiful of effects. The consequence of a reasoning process, therefore, he found. In consequence of a reasoning process, therefore, he found that among the things naturally visible, there was nothing the whole of which, if void of intelligence, could ever become more beautiful than the whole of that which is endued with intellect. And at the same time, he discovered that it was impossible for intellect to accede to any being without the intervention of soul. Hence, as the result of this reasoning, placing intellect in soul and soul in body, he fabricated the universe. And thus, hmm. that, it, that thus it might be a work naturally the most beautiful and the best. 
In this manner, therefore, according to an assimilative reason, it is necessary to call the world an animal, endued with intellect and generated through the providence of divinity. Right. In this manner, therefore, according to a similar to reason, it is necessary to call the world an animal, endued with uh, intellect and generated through the providence of divinity or God. Right? So, this... So, so what? Well, we've, we've, you've mentioned many weeks that this Pardon? is... You've mentioned for many weeks that this is uh, to demonstrate the activity of providence. Well, what significance is that? What's the... What's the significance of that? Who cares? Uh, probably. Uh, um, is it worthwhile for someone to say, in the middle of all of this confusion and suffering and pain and distortions in our universe, our disorder? In our personal there, universe. There is a way, our personal universe, there is still a way of demonstrating that in spite of all that, there's a divine providence and here's the structure behind it, if you're interested in seeing it. Is that worthwhile? Absolutely. No? Yeah. Well, I guess I just don't like And that. often you can't get much better than absolutely. <laughs> and, and what's behind it is that it's most good mm -hmm. and that it, and most fair, oh. most beautiful. I guess it's just that word providence. I don't, I don't like the translation. <laughs> You know, it's pro-noia. It's... Yeah, yeah, pro -noia. Yeah. yeah. I have no... By the way, you, can, you guys can help me with this issue. I do not know why they picked on the word pro -noia as a word to translate providence. The idea of providence... The idea of providence is not contained in the word providence or pro -noia. All that pranoia tells you is there's something prior to intelligence, which is goodness. It locates the idea. It is not a word that represents it. So, find that curious? I do. It locates the idea of Pardon me? goodness, you say. I don't know. Try something. Yeah. So, 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 uh, if you can find where the particular manifestation of goodness to all things, pardon me, needs the other part, where those things are receptive to it. See, this is not merely describing providence, but also it's going to show how all the way down things have to be receptive to receive it. It's not grace. That's not grace. This is how you have to understand it and be receptive to it for it to take place. In that sense, you became the center of the universe yourself. So, it, providence it's, it's not grace. It's a cooperative venture where it presupposes you understand what you're doing within this structure and can understand how providence therefore comes down and you're going to respond to it. Which is why he talks about dreams the way he talks about it later. And divination. Okay, we quit. What do you think? Thank you for sticking around for tonight. Brilliant. And remember, I'm going to sell copies of this parchment for an incredible sum. Take one. We'll have to do that right.